patents. Uh, patents filing uh, is a very costly and very time taking process. So before we file a patent, uh, we have to make sure that someone else has not filed uh, a patent with a same idea as ours. Okay. So obviously we have uh, the existing literature. I mean, we can we can search for uh, all the previously filed patents, but because there are so many uh, finding if somebody filed a similar idea is not an easy task. Now the traditional uh, lexicon based search engines might not work well here because the keywords uh, may not match that much. Right? So the patents, they have a particular style of writing. Um, so the keyword search uh, may not uh, give accurate results. So semantic search uh, uh, is an excellent uh, use case for uh, patent search. Okay. So in this tutorial, we are going to build a patent search uh, 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 using semantic search. Okay. So we are going to use this uh, US PTO data set, uh, which is uh, this US uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office, I think. And this uh, data set is put together by some Harvard, I guess, uh, using uh, the previously filed uh, patents. All right. So uh, some standard Python libraries. And then uh, from string to string, uh, we are importing uh, this Facebook's AI semantic search uh, uh, class. Okay. And then we are going to use this hugging face uh, data sets library uh, to uh, get the data. And then we will be, we will be doing some dimensionality reduction uh, to uh, visualize the data. Uh, so we are using this Disney algorithm. And then finally, matplotlib and also uh, when we read uh, string to string also has a convenient function uh, to visualize uh, 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 low dimensional data, let's say. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, yep. Yeah. So let's get the data first. Uh, it's this Harvard uh, USPTO data set. Now, using hugging face load data set. Uh, we have uh, the data file URL, okay? And then because this data set is quite huge, I guess it has millions of documents. I read somewhere here. So yeah, so it says it has 4.5 million patents. Now, uh, this is a demo application. So we don't uh, want to download all such uh, huge data. So it will take quite some time. So what we are doing is uh, we are uh, giving uh, some filters here so that we get uh, roughly uh, approximately about 25,000 patents. Okay, that's what we have done here. So with the load data set, uh, we'll just simply supply uh, 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 the URL and then uh, some filters. Okay, all right. So it will take some time, it will download the data. So as we can see here, uh, we have downloaded some data from uh, train, uh, which has about 16,000 records are the patents and the validation one uh, has about uh, 9,000 uh, patents, okay? So this hugging face data set, uh, it's, it's designed to do uh, machine learning model training, right? So that's why it is structured in a way that it has the train data set, the validation data set, uh, et cetera. Now the data set has a number of fields, for example, the patent number, uh, what is the, maybe the final decision, the title, abstract, or what are they claiming, the final date, etc, uh, etc. Et okay, so we are going to use uh, only a couple of fields. Uh, we will be using the abstract uh, to find, to do the semantic search. And then uh, we will be using uh, some label um, uh, to see which group uh, they belongs to. Okay, so the patents, they have some, some complex uh, hierarchical codes, uh, but uh, from those codes, we will be taking the first four characters, which uh, looks uh, something similar to this, okay? So for example, one of the columns we have here is this IPC subclass label, uh, where is it? IPC label, yeah. So we are taking this column IPC label, uh, 
uh, which is uh, this long string. So what we are doing is we are taking uh, the first uh, four characters. Okay, so the first four characters, uh, they will look like this. Okay. Now we don't need these class, background, summary, description, all those columns because uh, we are going to work with only the abstract. Okay, we will be using abstract to do the semantic search. And then we will be using the label to see which group uh, they belongs to. All right, uh, we have the same thing. And then uh, if you look up uh, the labels frequency, uh, we are using this counter function uh, on this uh, labels column. So on the train data set, it looks like this. For example, this label G06F, it has 14, 1406 patents uh, with this subclass, okay? Similarly, with this subclass Z0330, we have 119 documents. All right. And then, uh, so all the embedding models, they have a token or word limit. I mean, they cannot take some very, very long, infinitely long text and then create embeddings, right? They have some token limit. So because these are abstracts, uh, just to make sure that we don't have any abstract uh, with too much text or too long, what we are doing here is uh, we are excluding all the abstracts uh, which have more than 180 characters. Okay, uh, let's have a quick recap of what we have done so far. So we want to build a semantic uh, patent search engine. Uh, what we have done so far is we simply took a data set from hugging face uh, and we have applied some filters so that we have a sample of data rather than millions of records. And the data set has multiple fields. Uh, we need only few, right? I mean, we need only the abstract based on which the semantic search engine going to work. And then a class label uh, to see which group the patent belongs to. So we did some, uh, some manipulation of the label uh, to have a short a label. And then we have removed some unnecessary columns. Okay. Uh, that's what we did so far. Now, we are going to use this Facebook uh, semantic search library. Uh, it's a purpose-built library for achieving mainly two tasks. One is for clustering and the second one, semantic search of the documents. So here we instantiate the model and we need to supply the model name. So this uh, Distil Robota, uh, it's one of the many uh, large language or embedding models, okay? So we provide the model name. And then uh, we use this initialize a corpus uh, function or method uh, to create the embeddings and index them. All we need to do is we simply need to supply our data set. So we have the data set train, which has the abstract column. So it's going to use this abstract column uh, to create the embeddings and then uh, index them uh, in this variable f a i s s search now so this is the column i mean section because it has also uh, uh, the label column right so here we are telling uh, just use only the abstract column to create the embeddings now the embeddings type uh, uh, don't worry uh, we go with the default one which is this mean pooling and uh, batch size 16 meaning uh, it will uh, it will create embeddings for 16 documents uh, at a time, okay? It's just uh, to optimize the time. And then uh, using the index, uh, we, we are extracting the embeddings. So here we have the patent embeddings and then we have the patent titles and the patent subclass. Okay, so the index or this vector database, uh, it has the title which we have provided, it has the subclass uh, which is also we provided, uh, it has created these embeddings. So we extracted those three into these three variables. Uh, we, you will see why we are doing that. We are going to use these embeddings to do dimensionality reduction and then uh, we will visualize the data in lower dimension and we'll uh, label the data or color the data using these labels to see if similar documents are grouped together or if they are uh, separated uh, uh, from one another, okay? 
So if you look at uh, uh, this variable, the embeddings a shape, uh, it's this 15,000 uh, plus uh, by 768. So in the train data set we have, we have this 15,000 plus patents, right? So this refers to the number of patents. Now each a patent abstract uh, uh, embedding or this dense vector, it has a size of uh, 768. So this distilled Roboto uh, uh, model, it will create embeddings of size uh, 768. Okay, all right. Then let's do dimensionality reduction. Obviously, if you can visualize these 768 dimensions, uh, it would be great. But since we cannot visualize more than three dimensions, uh, we are going to use uh, this Disney algorithm uh, to reduce the data from 768 to just two dimensions. Okay, so here we initialize uh, with just two components. Again, all these are, uh, uh, you can leave it uh, as it is. For example, the random state uh, that is to reproduce uh, for reproducibility. Um, then we'll do the fit. So this is where uh, uh, the principal components are uh, uh, are computed okay all right so this time if you look at this disney embeddings now the shape is it's the same 1500 plus uh, uh, apps uh, patents but this time we have only two instead of this 1536 so essentially we have reduced the data sorry from 768 to just two dimensions okay um we have about some 20-ish labels, I believe. So we have about some 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So probably we have about 30-ish labels. Now we want to visualize uh, this data using uh, uh, using this reduced data. And we are want to color code the data using these labels. Because we have 30 labels, uh, we, have, we don't have 30 colors. So what we do is just for convenience, uh, we'll use the top 10 or more common or more frequent labels, okay? So these are the most common labels, the 10 labels, okay? And here all we are doing is, we are just taking this matrix, which is two columns and 15,000 plus rows. We are just pl plotting the data uh, using a scatter plot, but we are color coding it using uh, the uh, class, uh, the labels, right? So these are the four character labels. Uh, we have done this using matplotlib, but in the below code, we are doing exactly the same. I mean, the code looks longer, but all we are doing is just a bit of uh, data organization. Uh, but using plotly, because we can interact, we have done the exactly the same plotting, uh, uh, but using Plotly so that we can hover over and we can uh, read the title and the label, okay? So nothing much happening uh, within this code, uh, but if you have any questions or if anything is not clear, uh, please ask me in the comment section, okay? All right, so uh, let's quickly summarize what we did. So we start with some patents data set. We have created embeddings of size 768. And then we further reduce these 768 dimensions to just two dimensions. And then we have plotted the data. And while plotting, we have used the label to color code the data, right? So we have text, which is mapped to embeddings, which is mapped to just two dimensions, right? Now, this is quite amazing as you can see. For example, uh, all the patents, I mean, majority of the patents which have this label, uh, they are sitting very close to each other in this extremely highly reduced uh, dimensions, right? And similarly, we have uh, 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 the, all the patents uh, with this label A61K. Remember, what we did so far is unsupervised. We have never guided uh, any algorithms or model uh, to take the label into account and we have not provided it any direction, okay? We have provided only the abstract. 
only while we are doing the plot we are using label but the label hasn't been used anywhere else okay so this is quite amazing i mean we can map such uh, complex language uh, patent abstracts into some embeddings and further reduce them into just two dimensions and we still retain uh, lots of information okay for example all these articles uh, uh, belonging to this class uh, what's the material so it seems like these are about uh, this wireless communication so all the light blue ones seems to be about uh, wireless communication and equipment so those are semantically similar uh, that's why they sit uh, uh, near to each other uh, compared to the rest of the articles right so here we have obviously some overlap because probably the subject area uh, also overlap uh, whereas these ones especially let's look at what is this it's semiconductor so all these green one uh, it looks like uh, these are semiconductors and some material fabrication uh, and uh, more of this material science uh, 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 patents here and if you look at here what are these comprising composing antigen factors uh, so as as i said patents use some really complex language molecular imaging human pathology so it seems like some imaging techniques uh, receptor protein so these are biological imaging some biomolecules related stuff so this is semiconductors this is biology related and this one wireless communication sign let's look at what this one image processing device head mounted head mounted device computer program okay these looks like some image processing and computer vision uh, sort of related uh, image process aperture okay so as you can see these different themes uh, uh, they formed into different groups again keep in mind just we are using just two dimensions uh, to represent uh, the abstract right just two values now what we do is we we said so let's say uh, we came up with patent idea and we have written our abstract now we want to see uh, hey what are all the previously filed patents which are semantically similar to our idea okay so that we can see if our idea is new or if it is already been filed uh, if we want to take uh, uh, further steps to do the processing or filing right so here is our abstract uh, which says a method for profile matching includes uh, receiving a plurality of user profiles each user profile comprising of uh, respective user uh, so and so forth okay so uh, some peculiar language they use for these patents now it's very simple so here we have the index or our uh, sort of uh, vector database all we do is we simply do the search we provide uh, the two arguments which is our query and then how many results we want back okay so uh, this index it has indexed 15000 patents right from the training data set now uh, i mentioned in my couple of videos a uh, couple of previous videos uh, so what's happening is it will take this query text it will use the same method to create the embeddings and then it will compute the cosine similarity between the query embeddings to all the 15000 uh, previously filed patent embeddings and then sort them based on the similarity score and return the top 10 results okay so that's what we are doing here so from the results here we are simply uh, uh, showing the title of the patent and the subclass uh, they belongs to okay so these are the titles and then the subclasses so if you look at the subclass most of them belongs to this Z06F, uh, it seems like Z0 series, okay? It seems like a majority of them, maybe six or seven of them out of 10 are the Z06, okay? So that, that, that's the label. So it seems like uh, that's the category. Uh, this uh, patent uh, also going to belong to, okay? All right, uh, then we want to put our file our patent abstract uh, somewhere here on this plot so that we can see 
uh, which patents are similar to our patent okay so we are simply going to add to the data which is used to do this plotting a uh, one extra row with our uh, patent data okay i'll show you here so what we are doing here is we are using the get embeddings function and we are supplying our query okay so that will give us our query embeddings now when we de did the search all that is done uh, within this function we don't have to explicitly create embeddings for the query we don't have to explicitly compute the cosine similarity do the sorting and return the top results right so all that code is abstracted uh, within this search functionality whereas here we want we explicitly want the embeddings so that we want to visualize uh, the query uh, patent also uh, in this visualization so that's why we are using the get embeddings function and uh, uh, for our query we got the embeddings and then to the existing embeddings which is this patent embeddings which has these 15000 uh, documents we have added our query embedding okay at the very uh, uh, at the very end okay and then so this will have uh, so earlier we had Fifteen thousand seven hundred and twenty-four. Okay, fifteen thousand seven hundred and twenty-four by seven sixty-eight. Right, but this time we have added one additional embedding. So this will have fifteen hundred and seven thousand twenty-five. One extra embeddings, but the number of columns, which is the vector size, will still be the same. So we are using this data. Uh, we are again computing uh, 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 or reducing the data to just two dimensions using the Tisney algorithm, right? And because we have inserted the data at the very end, uh, our query embeddings reduced two points or the data uh, will be the last record. So we are, we are using this index minus one to get our queries embeddings transformed to just two dimensions okay and then this is the function we saw before uh, uh, we are just preparing the data to do the pl plotly plot and here we are actually plotting the data we are explicitly saying hey do my plot my query patent with this very big symbol so as you can see here uh yeah so this part of the code we 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 are just uh, making it stand out right so that we can visualize where our query uh, patent uh, sits so this way we can see okay if uh, this is our patent then we can see uh, uh, what are all other patents uh, which are semantically similar or the idea is similar to our patent so it seems like uh, uh, we are doing in some um, what do you say um, it's probably spanning across multiple fields or labels so that's why we can see here uh, the bluish ones the uh, the dark bluish the light bluish and also pinkish one so it seems like our uh, patent it's uh, it covers these three label areas okay um cool so that's how uh we can do semantic search uh in complex uh, uh documents like patents uh it's a bit long video uh, but i get i hope you get the idea uh, and again if you have any questions if any part of the code is not clear uh, please let me know in the comment section uh, i'll i'll i'm happy to answer any questions Thank you very much.